So sadly, I think that this has probably been the weakest episode of the season so far. There were some things that I really liked about this episode, especially in terms of plot development, like for example when Kyle turned up, but unfortunately there were also some scenes that disappointed me and in my opinion just didn't do so well, and I will be getting to all of that in this discussion. Hey guys, it's Leandra and this is my weekly Shadowhunters update where I bring you guys my discussion and opinions on the latest Shadowhunters episode. Today I'm going to be discussing season 3 episode 4. As always, this is going to be a spoiler filled review and discussion, so if you guys don't want to get spoiled on this latest episode, go watch it and then come back. Or you might want to go and watch some of my other discussions that I've done on the other three episodes of the season which are all up on my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and now let's jump right in. This episode comes right after that major major cliffhanger shocker where it is revealed that Jace is the night owl. While for me this was personally a huge shock just because I didn't see it coming, the idea of Jace being manipulated and controlled is actually a plot point that does very much get touched up on on the fourth book in the Mortal Instruments, City of Fallen Angels, and I actually really like how the show writers are going about executing this. I really like how the showrunners kind of match up those scenes where Jace is being manipulated and possessed with types of music, just generally the way that it's being filmed. One example of this was when Jace was walking through the Institute and all of the people around him seemed to go by him much slower. It was almost like he was sort of separated from the world. So overall, I think this is a plot point that the show is adapting very, very well. I definitely think that it's really interesting that the show is taking the direction of sort of making Jace believe that maybe he has some sort of mental disorder. This is definitely something that doesn't happen in the City of Fallen Angels. This is a plot that doesn't really get explored. Jace definitely doesn't think that he has a mental illness. Whatever happens though, I'm very interested in seeing how the show is going to develop this and all I can hope for is that the show writers handle the topic of mental illness very respectfully and are able to incorporate the right representation. On the other end of the spectrum, I think that Lilith herself is actually really disappointing as a character. I think that the show depicts her as being just like very emotional and very caring about like for example Sebastian's feelings towards her. She very much wants him to love her as a mother and care for her. In my opinion at least, I don't think this is the kind of way that a greater demon would act. Demons don't have souls or if they do they're very very corrupted souls and so it doesn't really make much sense for them to care what other people think of them, let alone have some kind of love within them. Just in my opinion, I think that this factor to her personality is kind of taking away from the sort of darkness and, you know, danger that she kind of poses to the Institute and the Shadowhunters. I don't really know what's going to happen with her from now onwards, but I do kind of hope that they sort of expand upon, you know, the real kind of power and evil that she really is. I think that they did a very good job at, you know, showing this in the first episode or the second episode, but I just feel like they're kind of losing ground here by just making her out to be way too caring and emotional and too human-like in my opinion. Now, we don't really see that much of Maya in this episode, but I do have to say though that I'm just liking her more and more. I really love her sort of like, no nonsense, you can't tell me what to do, strong feminism attitude that she has going on. I love it. In general, I don't really have much else to say about her in this episode, but I was very interested in the discussion that she and Luke had with one another. I'm definitely seeing some sort of shift in their relationship and I really really hope that it turns out to be okay and that they don't end up hating each other but I mean after all this is a TV show and shit's got to go down eventually doesn't it? Heidi's arc just doesn't interest me that much. As I said before I'm unsure whether Heidi is supposed to be the kind of Maureen that we see in City of Fallen Angels. She definitely has that vibe kind of going on the evil vampire especially with the blonde hair. She's basically a spitting image of Maureen, but I just really can't stand her and I think that her sort of general storyline is just way too cliche for me. I mean, I've seen the entirety of The Vampire Diaries, I've read and I've watched Twilight multiple times. I really, really do not need another typical scene where a vampire is like about to attack someone and then they're like, I'm hungry. Ugh. I don't know why. I just did not like that scene. I feel like that was way too stereotypical. I think that was just way too overused. I think it's a trope that is used 
used way too often in sort of vampiric fiction. Maybe I'm being too biased just because I think Heidi is so annoying, but yeah, I don't really like any scenes with her. I kind of forgot that Raphael ever did anything bad to Heidi. I don't know why, but the previous season just completely slipped my mind. When I was watching this episode and seeing Heidi, you know, torture Raphael, I was always thinking like, what, like, what did he do to her? Like all he did was subdue her once she was actually being evil. But apparently there was this really, really massive thing going on between them. Obviously I understand the kind of dynamics between like vampires when they try and get revenge on each other, but it was just really hard seeing Raphael suffer like that. And oh my goodness, when his leg was burning up in the sun, that was so disgusting. Again, kudos to the CGI people. That was disgustingly well done. But my favorite part of the episode was obviously Kyle. First off, I think that it's absolutely amazing that he's Australian. Like, I love this representation going on in the show. I love it. And second of all, you guys, this is Jordan. This is Jordan. We were waiting for him, like, the entirety of the show, basically. I love how Simon went over to his place. I love how they bonded over the guitar and the video games. And I'm just so happy that Simon's gonna move in. And I'm so happy. And I can just see it all play out in front of me, knowing what's gonna happen from the books. It's just so exciting. So I'm just really quickly going to go into some book spoilers. So if you haven't read up to or haven't read City of Fallen Angels, please mute the, the video until this book cover disappears. So obviously this is Jordan and as we all know from the books, Jordan is Maya's ex and they have a really bad history together. I don't know about you guys who've read the books, but like literally what was going through my mind, especially when Simon was talking with Maya before he went and sort of met Jordan, I was like, oh my goodness, Simon's gonna bring Maya over. They're gonna be like kissing, getting ready to have some sex, and then she's probably gonna see Jordan, and oh my goodness, I can just see it play out in front of me. It's so crazy. I'm actually really interested to see how the show is kind of going to handle like their storyline. I think it's very interesting that Maya never mentioned Jordan in the TV show because in the books, Jordan is mentioned while Maya sort of tells her backstory, but they never really do that in the show. So I'm interested to see how it's all gonna play out. If I'm being honest, I think that probably like like the reveal of who Jordan really is, is going to be that much more powerful just because she never really mentioned it. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. That phone call at the end was obviously very, very exciting between Jordan and Luke. I'm not gonna say anything because this is a non-spoiler section, but all I'm gonna say is we readers know it's gonna happen. So there are two more things that I'd like to touch up on. The first of which is Alex's arc. And the second thing is the girl that was sort of possessed, which sort of became unpossessed. And I'm gonna get to both of these just now. I don't know about you guys, but lately I just haven't really been feeling that much sort of excitement and enthusiasm from Alex's plotline. Don't get me wrong. I love Magnus. I love Malik. I ship them so much. They are so adorable. I love each scene that I have with them. But personally, I just feel like Alex's arc has not really consisted of anything but Magnus recently. He doesn't really have his own thing going on. I think it's great that he is with Magnus and that they're sort of figuring out their issues, but I'd really like to see him more as a person individually. And that is just something that's sort of missing from the show, in my opinion. Second of all, I was really confused about that girl who, you know, was possessed and then sort of was unpossessed when Jace came as the night owl and sort of did that weird thing to her and then like she was totally fine again. I was really intrigued by what happened because as far as I know, Lilith told Jace to kill her and he doesn't really kill her. He just sort of unpossesses her or like sends the demon away. So I'm wondering whether that was something he did intentionally. And with intentionally, I mean like intentionally with his own sound mind. I mean like not being possessed by, um, you know, Lilith. I wonder whether there was maybe a part of him that is very much aware of what's going on while he is being possessed. And so maybe this was something that he did in order to save the girl. Or, you know, it could just be a trick from Lilith all along and like the girl's gonna die and everything's gonna be horrible again. Then obviously we are left with that big, big cliffhanger at the end when Lilith goes and visits Magnus. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that was just something that really freaked me out. I was like, oh my God, what does she want with poor Magnus? Like, what is she gonna do to my baby? Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm very excited. I don't know whether this is like something intentional that she's doing, like she's seeking out 
Magnus to do something evil or whether she's really just in a need of a warlock and then Magnus sort of uses that as like being like a double agent kind of thing and takes her down. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm really excited. We'll see. I am very, very much interested in what's gonna happen in the next episode and I hope you guys are too. That was it for my review. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of the episode and whether you agreed or disagreed with the points that I touched up on. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!